I'm here today with Pooja Dutt, a $200,000 Microsoft software engineer, but her journey getting there was pretty difficult. She had a 2.6 GPA in college, she failed many coding interviews, and wanted to quit software engineering entirely at one point. And in this video, we're going to be going through her whole journey from failure to big time success. And with that being said, Pooja, can you give us your background a little? Uh, yeah, so my journey starts um, at UW-Madison. I actually started off majoring in biomedical engineering, and I started out in the major thinking that this was what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. The problem was when I got to chemistry class, I was actually really bad at chemistry. I almost failed my first organic chemistry class. I heard that class humbles people, so. Yes, it was pretty tough. From there, I kind of felt lost and I didn't really know what to do. So I started taking other classes just to see if there was something else I would like. And one of the classes I stumbled upon was intro to computer science. Right. So I liked that class and I took discrete math after that and intro to data structures and algorithms. And I continued to like those sorts of classes and I switched my major to computer science oh, in my okay. second year. Okay. Was that going well? Yeah, it kind of. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> the computer science classes were going well, but unfortunately I neglected my other classes. I got a 2.6 GPA, so uh -huh. maybe it wasn't the best strategy. GPA was not great, but I learned a lot with computer right. science. Okay. How was the software engineering career search with the 2.6 GPA? It was really hard. So my school would have career fairs and I would actually attend those career fairs. And every time that I would go, a lot of those big tech companies or just larger companies in general would ask for your GPA. They wouldn't really take me seriously. And so I didn't know if I could actually become a software engineer. And oh. this was even for internships. I couldn't even get an internship. So what I ended up doing was I went to more local companies around the area, around the Madison area. And there was one company that said yes to me and they gave me a chance. They didn't ask for my GPA, which I got really lucky. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I ended up interning with them. And instead of getting a job the next year after graduating, I actually ended up networking within that company for a subsidiary that they owned. And I networked with the CTO of that company oh, to get sick. my job after graduation. Nice. Given that you were only in like this local environment, GPA wasn't doing that well. How did you actually come up into the big tech realm? Yeah, so I had to first practice in a smaller company and level up by getting more software engineering skills that would actually be relevant to the industry. So from there, I actually interviewed at Target. I got a referral through a friend. So again, I applied, but I, I didn't get any interviews because I didn't have that great of experience yet and my GPA wasn't the best, but I got lucky again. So it was still slightly holding you back. It was like yes. that, that ghost haunting you a little bit. Of course, yeah, yeah, a little bit. But I did well in that interview and I worked at Target for a couple of years until recruiters at big tech companies started reaching out to me. And so that began a one year long journey of me interviewing at multiple different big tech companies. Right. So first I started at Microsoft. I, a recruiter reached out to me there and I started with the interview process so I took an online assessment and he assured me that this was the easiest part of the process. Okay. And I failed the Ooh, online assessment. Okay, the easiest part. <laughs> the easiest part. He seemed a bit disappointed because our conversation was pretty promising beforehand and he seemed confident that I could pass the OA. But he said, you know what, we can try again in a few months. Right. I oh, win. so he still liked you. Yes. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh -huh. Where else did you interview? So I actually got interviews at Meta, Google, Reddit, LinkedIn, and Amazon. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> if everything wasn't going that well for you, how did you get these interviews? So my theory is I got promoted really fast at Target. Okay. Yeah, okay. so they gave me an environment where you didn't have to be productive right away. You could just learn and grow first for the first year. And because of that, it accelerated my growth. And I was able to pick up really big projects, lead them from start to finish, and then actually deal with customers. I was doing things that senior engineers were doing in my second year. How did those interviews go? Did you get any offers? My next interview was with Amazon. And at this point, I'd started studying leak code. So for the first Microsoft, interview, I actually didn't even really start studying, which was oh. probably why I failed okay. the online <laughs> that assessment. That makes sense then. <laughs> yeah, because I was still deciding whether or not I even wanted to work in big tech. It was right. just like, you know, a pipe dream for me. Also, I had to start getting over the imposter syndrome that I had and start believing that I actually could make it to these companies. Right. So I interviewed at Amazon. I took the online assessment and I passed the online assessment. Nice. I got to the second round and I completely failed. I even remember what the question was. It was the LRU cash question. Oh, I think that's a popular one. 
Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like you could use like a, a linked hash map, uh -huh. I believe, uh -huh. and I didn't. Amazon loves hash maps. So they I, do. I so yeah, I failed Amazon. That was my second rejection. Then I actually interviewed at Google. And at this point, I was actually studying with someone else at Target because they were also wanting to leave Target. So we were right. both studying leak code problems together. We were doing mock interviews together. And I actually gave them the referral for Google as well. So we were both studying for Google. He got into Google. I failed the first round. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so not a great story there. Hey, at least you helped someone. True, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Then it had been three months at that point. So then yeah. I had my Microsoft interview again. Okay. So we talked with the recruiter. I started the online assessment. And this time I felt a lot better. The first time I had actually gone through a problem and not finished all of the test cases properly, like not all of them had passed and I did, mm. I ran out of time. Right, right. So this time I focused on specifically that problem and I made sure that all the edge cases were tested mm. and I submitted, I felt pretty good about it. And then he called me the next day and said that I failed again. The online assessment. How? What? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's and tough. There was a multiple choice section and he said that I did the coding part perfectly, but I failed the multiple choice section. So I failed that and I honestly felt pretty devastated because Microsoft was one of the companies I think I would have been happy working at. Yeah. And so for me, I just felt like my dream was getting further and further away. Mm -hmm. But I still had a few more interviews because recruiters are still reaching out to me. Right. And so next I interviewed at Reddit and that interview went really badly because the interviewer, he didn't put his camera on first of all. And then I couldn't really understand what he was asking. And as I was talking through the problem, I didn't even really understand the problem, but I tried talking through it. I asked him a question at one point and he didn't respond. And then I hear him from far away saying, oh, sorry, I had a package delivered. So oh. give me one second. He what? was talking during an interview? During the interview, he had opened his door to talk to someone delivering his package. And I was just waiting there for 10 minutes. Minutes. And he didn't pause the interview or say, oh, I'll give you an extra 10 minutes. He just kept going. What? So, How's that fair? What? Yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. So I ended up failing that interview. I never heard uh -huh. back from him, actually. Uh -huh. He ghosted me. Then after that, I had another interview again with Amazon. So they reached out again, different yeah. recruiter this time. I passed the online assessment. I got through the second round as well. And then I eventually got to the final round. Right. So the final round was four different rounds. It was a behavioral, two coding rounds, and then a system design. I also got the 2D island problem. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. the so, BFS, DFS. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that one was a very common one. That was the second uh, coding problem I had. So that one was pretty quick, like, you know, I whizzed through that one. Uh, behavioral round also went pretty well. System design, I never really know how that goes, but I just yeah. try my best. And so I felt like fairly confident about it. But I got a call from the recruiter, not an email, the next day saying, we thank you so much for interviewing with us. We actually don't want to hear from you for a year. What? <laughs> so something they went- They said that on the phone. Yes, They're... on the phone. So something went very wrong. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, so at this point I'd failed a lot of interviews and my imposter syndrome was pretty bad. Yeah, confidence. Um, confidence was very low. At this point, I also called my parents crying because I was like, I don't think this is for me. I can't, you know, target is my ceiling. I don't think I can really get past that. Right. And so they tried to comfort me and they said, you know what, it's okay. Like whatever you decide, if you want to keep going, that's fine. But we're proud of you, even if you want to just continue oh, working nice. at Target. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, you know, you're, you're happy parents. here. <laughs> exactly. But for me, I'm pretty competitive at this point. It wasn't really, it might've been toxic. It wasn't really about working at these places. It was more like I wanted to crack the interview and I wanted uh, them to want me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wheels got to turn around. Yeah. Exactly. At one point I even said that there are a couple companies I was interviewing at that I didn't even want to work at and I would reject them, but I wanted them to first accept me. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which in hindsight, I think if I would have gotten <laughs> one of those companies, I probably wouldn't have been strong enough to say no. <laughs> <laughs> then I actually ended up getting another chance with Microsoft. Okay. And I had another interview with Meta. Okay. And then an interview with LinkedIn. So those uh -huh. are my last three interviews. I ended up passing the online assessment for Microsoft finally. And then I did the interview for Meta. Uh, the first round interview and that process was really smooth. I was able to get past that because at this point I was just cranking out leak code problems. So I was practicing a lot. And then I also had my LinkedIn interview and I passed the first round for that. Okay. So cool. then I had my final rounds at Microsoft LinkedIn and Meta. This was right after COVID. So they were removing the second rounds from a lot of these oh. interviews. So you went from first round to the final round. Because they really wanted candidates. Yeah, yeah they were yeah. just streamlining candidates immediately. So I was prepping for all of those rounds. Pretty much all three companies were doing uh, 
uh, one behavioral, two coding, and one system design, with maybe some variability with like medium versus like hard lead code questions. Yeah. The LinkedIn final round interview came and I completely failed that. To be honest, I won't get into it too much. I know why I failed. Okay. One of the coding rounds, they asked a hard dynamic programming problem and I just, I crumbled. I, I couldn't do it. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> exactly. For Meta, I think one of the coding rounds went really well. The second coding round, I also didn't pass. I knew I was going to mm. fail that. And yeah. I think you have to do pretty much perfectly in all of those right, rounds. Right, right. So I failed Meta. And my only hope was the last Microsoft final yeah, round interview. The third time. The third time. So the night before that interview, I actually went to a platform called Algo Expert, and I just started doing some of the medium and hard problems, mm -hmm. just watching the videos, because I didn't want to overload myself by doing a lot of problems right. the night before and cramming. And I came across this word search problem, word search to problem on Leak Code. Basically, it's like a boggle board, and you have to f you have a list of words, and you have to find all of those words in that boggle board. It's like mm -hmm. a 2D matrix. So I went into that interview. I had three coding rounds, actually, a behavioral and then a system design. And so in two of the coding rounds, they went well. They were more like medium recurs recursion problems. Mm -hmm. The behavioral also went well, and then the de system design, again, I never know how well that goes, yeah. but I got through it. The last coding round, I was really nervous. It was going to be a hard problem. So the person interviewing me came up to me and said, okay, we are going to go through a problem called word search too. Oh. So it was exactly the problem that I had watched the video explanation right, on right, the right. night before. I got nice. really, really lucky. That, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I was able to get through that problem and I felt good about it. What I didn't know was during that whole interview process, actually two teams had been interviewing me. So a couple managers from one team and then a couple managers from another team. And the recruiter called me almost a couple hours after that interview and he said, hey, I can't give you all the news yet, but it's looking really, really good. And I just yeah. want to let you know that you're interviewing for one team and another team was helping out, but now that team wants you too. Oh. So I got really, really lucky and apparently both teams wanted me. And at the end of the day, I actually got to continue having conversations with both hiring managers and deciding based on my preference, which right. team I wanted to go to. Awesome. So you got the offer from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. You know, that's actually a very interesting point where kind of what happened in your Amazon interview and a bit Microsoft interview. The more interviews you fail, the more interview experience you gain, right? Yes. I also had an opportunity where I had an interview on another company that I failed, but I passed it in a company that I ended up getting an offer from. So it's oh. very typical that stuff yeah. like this happens. If you get an interview fail, it's just one step away from success in a sense. That's how I think about it because it's yep. very realistic, right? For sure. Yeah. And I've heard of so many other people that they get into these big tech companies after their third, fourth, fifth try. Right, right. And so I agree. I think it kind of calms your nerves to just fail a bunch of interviews. There's yeah. not as much pressure. And then you're also getting real life learning experience to right. get through that process. I also talked to this one other person. She said she failed her first two times getting into Google and then got into her third time. And then she was actually shy to tell other people that she got into Google her third time. But turns out everyone else was like, yeah, it was my third time as well. So it's very common to re get rejected, but then accepted later on. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you had mentioned there are basically three buckets of interviews that you did. Behavioral, technical, and system design. Can you give for the audience particular specific resources that they can use to prep? Yeah, for sure. So number one for all three, YouTube. Specifically on YouTube for the lead code problems, I like to watch Neat Code. Neat Code IO, he has yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of lead code problems on there. I know like other YouTubers that you know might just post some specific data structures and algorithms videos that are helpful for that. I've also used algoexpert.io. I think that was very helpful. For the data structures algorithms specifically. Yeah, mostly because they have really comprehensive video explanations. And then the most common is of course leadcode.io. Yeah. I was grinding problems on there like crazy. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. if you get premium, you can also choose specific companies and look at their most commonly asked questions that were quite recent as well. Right, right, right. And then you can just practice those problems. So I, I did that as well to optimize right. for the interviews. And then for system design, I used Hello Interview and honestly, again, mostly YouTube. Yeah. I watched a ton of system design interviews. If you just search system design interview or like advanced system design interview, a ton of information comes up there. Yeah, I've heard grokking the system design interview mm -hmm. and designing data intensive applications are general good resources but yeah once yeah. again putting it whatever you do into practice is what's going to help you because especially those are very conversational based For where sure. it's like 
design this architecture. Okay, what would you do here? What would you do here? It's not really like lead code question, answer. It's more of a conversation, if anything. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's super important because most people just focus on lead code and they neglect the other aspects of the interview. And I think that's the part that you like really have to focus on as well yeah. because the bar is asking those lead code questions. Exactly. So they want more than just the bar. Exactly. But the behavioral, I think what helped me a lot was the mock interviews I did with my friend who was also interviewing at that time. Oh, yeah. huge, yeah. That's so huge. we gave each other pointers and there were some things that, for example, he said maybe didn't seem natural when I said it out loud. And so he kind of corrected me on that and, and helped me sound a little bit more natural. We both helped each other think of examples because we worked with each other at Target. And right. so I was able to kind of pinpoint like, hey, you did this with this project and yeah. that was really like meaningful. sharing your story a little better. Exactly. That up. One of my friends who got laid off and then ended up getting a way better offer, he studied a lot on Pramp.com where he got mock interviews with software engineers at top tech companies like Meta, Google. And the thing is, those people, they do interviews on the regular. They give a lot of interviews on the regular, but being able to do it on the side in a safe practice-like environment to just get your mentals right in terms of all this, super underrated. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Let's just say you're a student struggling in computer science and you really want to get into big tech. What's your number one piece of advice? Maybe a few years ago, I would have said, just keep applying and eventually you'll find something. But honestly, that just doesn't work anymore. The tech industry is really volatile and it's so hard to get a job, even for senior engineers. So don't cold apply anymore. Like you can't really yeah. beat the ATS system, honestly. I haven't really seen anyone beat the ATS system. What you need to do is you need to network. So talk to your connections who work at the companies you wanna work at and then get a referral from them or even better, get in contact with a hiring manager that you wanna work for mm. and they'll streamline yeah. you to the interview process. They, they can get you in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, I don't know people that work at these companies. Honestly, like you have to just find people. Yeah. You need to just cold email people or cold DM people on LinkedIn and not hiring managers, not recruiters, because they get too many DMs. You have to first start with just software engineers yeah, that work engineers. at those companies. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually build a relationship with them and they'll connect you with hiring managers or people yeah. that they deem like, you know, valuable enough to get you an interview. Yeah. I think uh, far too many people, they just want a golden spoon handed to them. Yeah. This is the way. But nowadays it's much more difficult. And just cold applying doesn't work because frankly, there are too many AI tools out there that can mass apply. I was actually talking to an Apple and Google recruiter uh, recently and he mentioned that AI has significantly changed the landscapes and if you don't have, for example, a referral, you are basically in a bucket of one of a million instead of one of a couple thousand. Reaching out on LinkedIn is still an excellent strategy and your hiring manager, that's a, I would say like a level up on the referral, right? Because mm -hmm. if they like you, they can put you directly into the interview and skip that whole like queue of applications directly. For sure. One more thing I was going to mention is if you are going to apply for a job and just get a referral, let's say, and not have a hiring manager vouch for you, you definitely want to apply to a job that's been posted less than 48 hours ago. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. there's already thousands of applications. <laughs> it's <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pooja, thank you so much for being on this video. I really hope that you guys got a lot of value out of this. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you guys don't already know, Pooja is a huge tech YouTuber and her links to all her socials will be down below in the description. So definitely check out her channel. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.